Mother, why did Daddy switch to Postum? Your father says there's no caffeine in Postum, nothing to spoil your sleep, and your father knows best. <laughs> Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as Father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons. Brought to you by Instant Postum, the good-tasting drink that's entirely caffeine-free. And by Post's 40% Brand Flakes, America's largest-selling brand flakes. It was James... A. Garfield, who said, if wrinkles must be written upon our brows, let them not be written upon the heart. The spirit should not grow old. What does this have to do with the James Anderson family of Springfield? Well, really nothing, because here is a family wherein the spirit burns warm and bright. But sometimes a man's mind plays little tricks on him, and on such occasions he needs a little nudging to return to a belief in his own basic opinions. For example, the other evening... When the white frame house on Maple Street was bustling with the activities of Bud and Betty as they made preparations to attend a wedding, Jim received a phone call which was to send him on a mental roller coaster ride. Like this. Well, that sounds great, George. We'd like to very much. Well, that's fine with us. Yeah, we'll see you around eight then. Fine. Goodbye. Margaret, better get out your tennis shoes and your gym bloomers. I'd better do what? Take a light workout and a quick rub down. Pack plenty of liniment and a few splints. What in the world are you talking about? You and I are going to play a little badminton tonight. Badminton? Mm-hmm. Oh, dear, are you out of your mind? Not at all. That was George Phillips on the phone. And they've invited us over for a few games this evening. Oh, no. Supposed to be over there around 8. Dear, you're not serious about this, are you? Well, certainly. Why shouldn't I be? Well, after all, we're not exactly teenagers. So what? Have you got some rubber-soled shoes of some kind you can wear? For heaven's sake, Jim, we can't do this. Why not? They invited us. Well, it's a very flattering invitation, but it came a few years too late. Now, where did you get an idea like that? You talk as though we're a couple of doddering old octogenarians. Well, you look as young as the day I married you. Thank you, dear, but I really... You know as well as I do that old saying that you're only as old as you feel. I don't feel any older than I ever did. As a matter of fact, I think I feel better than I have in my whole life. Dear, even if I felt up to this, I don't know how to play badminton. Neither do the Phillips. We're just going to get some fun out of it. A little much-needed exercise. Well... And this is a good night to get out. Didn't you say the kids were all going to be gone this evening? Yes, Betty and Bud are going to Evelyn Brickert's wedding. And Kathy's going to spend the evening with Patty Davis. All right, then. What are we waiting for? Well, I feel we both should have our heads examined for this, but... All right. Good. Uh, where do you think those old tennis shoes of mine are? Uh, probably in your closet where they've always been. Yeah, that's a good place to start looking. Uh, you coming up? Mm, in a minute. I've got to put away a few things in the kitchen first. Okay, better hurry. Gee, you sound sharp tonight, Father. Thank you, Princess. I feel great. I wish I felt that good. I'm completely, but completely worn out getting ready for this wedding. Well, you can feel good if you want to. It's all a matter of your mental attitude. Well, I must have an awful tired attitude, then. Ow! Ouch! <laughs> What's that? Oh, that's Bud. He's in the bathroom shaving. <laughs> <laughs> shaving? Bud? He doesn't shave yet. He just started tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think this historic moment would arrive for a few years yet. Well, it hasn't really. All he's got is a little bit of fuzz. But he says if a boy is old enough to wear a tuxedo, he's old enough to Ooh, shave. Oh, ow! Doesn't sound like he's exactly enjoying it. <laughs> I've been trying to get him out of there so I can take a shower. How long has he been at this operation? For hours. We're both going to be late if he doesn't hurry. Bud, hurry up, Bud. Get away, I'm shaving. I need to get in there and shave myself. Bud, are you about finished in there? That you, Dad? Yeah, you're holding up the works, boy. I'll be out in a second. The length of time it's taking him, you'd think he had a beard. Okay, next. Well, what was going on in there? All those low moans. Oh, nothing. Just combing my hair. <laughs> you must have been using a fairly sharp comb. What's all the adhesive plaster on your face? Oh, nothing. 
Why don't you tell him you were shaving? All right, Gabby. Who asked you anything? Who well, weren't you? You'd better get in there and shower while you have a chance, Betty. All right. But go on and tell him what you were doing, Bud. Go on. Oh, get lost. <laughs> Bud, you don't need to be so secretive about shaving. That's something all of us men have to put up with. Us men? Sure. As a matter of fact, if you told me what you were doing, I could have given you a few pointers. How can you stand to go through that every day, Dad? Well, there's one way of avoiding it. Don't cut yourself. You mean you can shave without cutting yourself? <laughs> yeah, it's possible. Mommy! She's downstairs, kitten. She'll be right up. Bud, you better start getting into that tuxedo you rented. The tie alone will take a good hour and a quarter. Yeah, I better. Where did you say Mommy was, Daddy? Downstairs. She'll be up. Anything I can help you with? I don't know. What do you think I ought to take over to Patty's to play with? Oh, better take some dolls. Dolls? Sure. What do you think I am, a child? <laughs> well, I uh, was under that impression. I'm pretty sure you're not a dog or a kangaroo or... Daddy, dolls are for little girls. I see. What are you, an old lady? Oh, Daddy, don't be corny. <laughs> well, so now I'm getting that from you, too. Dear, I forgot to mention, you got a letter today, and... Mommy, what should I take over to Patty's tonight? Well, you'd better take some pajamas and a toothbrush. I mean to play with. Oh. Well, um, why don't you take your sewing set? Yeah, I forgot about that. I'll get that out. <laughs> I think our little girl is starting to grow up. She's given up dolls, and she's discovered that I'm corny. <laughs> oh? Those are two sure signs right there. Mm. I'm afraid they're all growing up. I was just thinking today about this wedding they're going to. That's the third one of Betty's friends that's gotten married lately. Next thing we know, it'll be Betty. Yeah, I guess we are going to have to face that sooner or later. Bud's the only one who doesn't seem to grow any older. You think not? You should have seen what he was doing about 15 minutes ago. <laughs> Shaving. Shaving? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> He's got the scars to prove it. <laughs> Oh, dear. The years are certainly slipping by fast. Yeah, a fella doesn't realize. Oh, here's that letter I was telling you about. What letter is this? It came today. I forgot to give it to you. Well, what do you know? Look here, it's from old Eddie Gilbert. Mm -hmm. I thought you'd be surprised. I haven't even thought about Eddie in years. I wonder what he's up to these days. Well, I'd better see if Betty's got some rubber-soled shoes I can wear tonight. She's in taking a shower. Old Eddie Gilbert. I don't think I've seen him since we graduated from high school. What a guy. I remember he had more energy than sense. Oh, say, Betty, do you have any rubber-soled shoes of any kind? Rubber-soled shoes? Mm hmm Mother, I hardly think that'd be the thing for the bridesmaid to wear. <laughs> I don't mean you. I want to borrow them. Well, Eddie works for the gas company. What do you want rubber-soled shoes for? Well, your father and I are going to play badminton tonight. What? Oh, you're kidding. Ask your father. Well, what'd you say I was reading here? Father, you're not really going to play badminton, are you? Well, certainly. Why shouldn't we? Well, it just seems that you're too... Well, I guess it's all right. It seems that we're too what? Nothing. Gee, I've got to get dressed or I'll never make the wedding. We'd better get ready, too, dear, if we're supposed to be over there by eight. Uh, Margaret, are you sure you feel up to this? <laughs> well, I don't know. I feel all right now. I don't want to urge you into this. There's no use taking chances. Well, I doubt if they'll be up to much of a game either. What does Eddie have to say? Oh, I haven't finished his letter yet. Says he might have to make a trip over here to Springfield in a day or so. Says he'll drop in if he does. Well, that'll be nice. Yeah, it'd sure be good to see old Eddie again. Old fireball Eddie. Do you think this skirt and a sweater would be the thing to wear? Yeah. Hmm, Eddie says he's been having a little trouble with rheumatism lately. I can't imagine anything like that catching up with an active guy like Eddie. Well, of course, he's not as young as he used to be. What do you mean? He's no older than I am. In fact, he's a year younger. Ah. Uh, well, even so... Oh, no, listen to this. He's a grandfather. Eddie is? He's got three grandchildren. Why, well, that just can't be. Well, let's see. Didn't you say once that he had one daughter a year or two older than Betty and then another one just a little younger? He says the kids call him Gramps. This I just can't believe. Mother! Gramps. 
Margaret, he's a year younger than I am. Yes, that's what you said. Mother, will you zip me up? Certainly, dear. Gramps. Mother, do you think there's anything through that catching the bride's bouquet? I mean, about being the next one to get married? Well, it's an old tradition. I don't suppose it always works out. Gramps. Well, Evelyn's going to sort of throw her bouquet in my direction. Oh? Who's going to referee? Well, look at our handsome young man here. Yeah, uh, how do I look, Mom? Well, you look fine, bud. Real nice. Better fix that tie. You look like a windmill. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I couldn't get it tied right. Somebody will have to do that for me. And don't hunch up your shoulders like that. Just because you've got a tuxedo on, you don't have to go out of your way to look uncomfortable. Well, it does make you feel kind of stiff-like. Well, relax. I want my children to have an uncle they can be proud of. Your uncle? children? I'm going to have two boys and a girl. Marcia says she's going to have three girls, but I think two boys and a girl will be nicer, don't you, Mother? Well, um... Holy cow, I would be their uncle, wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> uncle Bud. I wish you had a more dignified name. Hey, Kathy will be their aunt. Aunt Kathy. <laughs> Imagine having that shrimp for an aunt. <laughs> Father, what do you want them to call you? Huh? What's that? Want who to call what? Your grandchildren. My grandchildren? Do you want them to call you grandfather or grandpa or... Uh... How about Gramps? Um, I think you two had better get going or you'll be late. Oh, creepers, yes. Look what time it's getting to be. Come on, bud. Okay. Oh, Betty, you were going to find some rubber-soled shoes for me. Look around my closet, Mother. You'll find some. All right. <coughs> Jim, you'll never get ready just sitting there on the bed staring at Eddie's letter. Don't you have to shave? Uh, Margaret, maybe you'd better call the Phillips and tell them, uh, something came up and we can't make it. Can't make it? I, uh, I feel a little tired, I think. <laughs> Why, Jim. Have we got any vitamin pills around the house? <laughs> I guess plenty of us feel a little like Jim does. Kinda old before our time. Well, here's a man with a few cheering words for us. Ed Prentice. Say, if you feel kinda logy and dull, sorta droopy, fresh out of energy, well, usually there's nothing wrong with you that a good night's sleep won't cure. Trouble is, how do you get a good night's sleep? Is that your problem? Well, friend, could be the caffeine in your coffee. That caffeine could be keeping you up nights and then letting you down days. If you're a victim of Mr. Coffee Nerves, here's your answer in one word. Post them. That's right. Post them. Instant post them. You just switch to instant post them and see what a difference post them makes in your sleep, in your nerves. That's because post them is caffeine-free, contains not one iota of caffeine. Of course, caffeine doesn't bother everybody. Lots can handle it. But if you can't, you can switch to Postum and love it. Yes, sir, good old instant Postum. Get a jar tomorrow and drink Postum for just 10 days. Now, I mean drink Postum exclusively. And then you be the judge. Bet you'll be a Postum fan for the rest of your life. <laughs> Well, there have been a few changes in the Anderson household since last night. Jim Anderson, the sprightly young father, seems to have a slightly different outlook on life this Saturday morning as he comes carefully downstairs, makes his way through the house, and slowly seats himself at the breakfast table, like this. Well, good morning, dear. Good morning, Margaret. Where are the children? Well, they slept later than usual this morning. But I've called them. They'll be down in a minute. Dear. Hmm? Why the dark blue suit? Oh. Well, I think it's time I started wearing more conservative clothes. After all, when a man reaches my age, he can't dress like a schoolboy. Well, I don't recall that you ever dressed like a schoolboy. Those tweed suits and things, they're all right for younger men. As a man gets on in years, he has to dress accordingly. 
Time takes its toll, Margaret. The fire is burning low. Now, how did this fire get so low all of a sudden? Yesterday, you were burning like a blast furnace. What happened to Jumping Jim, the badminton boy? Well, that was yesterday, honey. I'm considerably older this morning. Hmm. Well, it's been a long time since yesterday. Look, honey, let's face the facts. We're getting on in years. We're not kids anymore. The old body wears out, you know. Whose old body are you talking about? Well, we can't go on pretending we're youngsters. We're middle-aged. We're past middle-aged. Oh, for goodness sake. Look say. at the way the children are growing up. Any day now, Betty will be getting married, flying away. Bud will be married before we know it, and he'll fly away. Next, it'll be Kathy. She'll be flying away. And who's left? Just you and me and our old flying school. <laughs> There's something we have to think about seriously. Our time is running out. Dear, just yesterday, you were insisting that it's all in our mental attitude. That we have to keep young in spirit. Well, I say a lot of things. You know what's wrong with you, don't you? Time, that's all. The minutes, the hours, the days. Getting older all the time. You can't stop it. It's that letter from your friend, Eddie Gilbert. That's what started the whole thing. The minute you read that he was a grandfather... He's a year younger than I am. Well, what of it? He's an old man with rheumatism. His children, both married and gone, grandchildren that call him Gramps. Eddie Gilbert. He's younger than I am. You said that, dear. I had kind of a twinge in my hip when I got out of bed this morning. <laughs> you suppose it's rheumatism? <laughs> oh, Jim. Kind of a sharp sticking pain. I know, I know. You know? I forgot to take the laundry tag out of your pajamas. <laughs> Well, it felt like rheumatism. Mm -hmm. What would you like for breakfast, dear? Bacon and eggs? No, I think I'll just have some dry toast and prunes. Ew. Hi, Dad. You at the table? No, I'm running a hot dog concession at Coney Island. <laughs> Am I at the table? I just asked. Treat your father gently this morning, bud. He's not long for this world. <laughs> you going someplace, Dad? No, bud. I'm just sitting here waiting for my breakfast. I'm going to get the morning paper. Come on, dear. Smile. Well, what's funny? You know, Margaret, it's the kids growing up that makes us feel old. I've come to that conclusion. But you're just as young as you feel. You said that yourself. Well, that was... Hey, uh, take a look at this, Dad. Story here in the paper about a guy shaving. Got tired of fighting with his whiskers every day, so he put weed killer on his face. <laughs> oh, no. I guess it didn't work too good. They got them all bandaged up. Yeah, I can imagine. I don't think I have to shave for a while yet, Dad. Oh? I was pretty sure I could see some whiskers on my face last night, but I can't find them this morning. Here's your postum. Mmm, does smell pretty good. Hi, Daddy. Good morning. Kitten. What do you have on your head? This is my Captain Video space helmet. I'm going to wear it when I go to the moon. Oh? When uh, are you planning to leave? I don't know exactly, but they say we're going to the moon any day now. And I got to be ready. Hey, l uh, let me see that. Don't take it off. I'll lose my oxygen pressure. <laughs> Let him try it, kitten. He'll get it stuck in his big old head. I will not. Don't be such a little stingy face. It's my space helmet. I'm not going to hurt it. You will, too. Quit pulling. Just let me see it, will you? Well, dear, are those the grown-up children you were talking about? Daddy, he's breaking my arm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even touching her. All right, you two, break it up and come to the table. Okay. Tell Bud to stop it. Bud, stop it. <laughs> I'm starved. Let's eat. Bud, we don't read at the table. Put the comics away. Okay, okay. I don't know, honey. Maybe I will have just one egg and a little bacon. All right, dear. And that's for me. Probably Joe. I'll get it. I'll get Look it. Look out. Don't knock the table over. I'll get it. It's probably Ralph. Oh, I've got it. I've got it. Quit pulling. I've got it. I've got it. Well... That's why don't you do something, dear? I think I'll take off this coat and vest, Margaret. Uh, make it two eggs instead of one. Oh. Oh, yes, he's here. It's for you, Father. Me? Uh, who is it? He didn't say. It's some man. Oh. Hello? 
Yes? Eddie! Eddie Gilbert! Sure, I remember you. Got your letter yesterday. Uh, how are you feeling? Good, good. Sure, we're going to be home. We'll be glad to see you. Uh, can I come down to pick you up? All right. Uh, 607 Maple Street. That's right. Fine, Eddie. Goodbye. That was old Eddie Gilbert. He's on his way out. Who's Eddie Gilbert? He's an old friend of mine, Princess. We uh, went to school together. Haven't seen him in years. He's a grandfather now. Well, gee, Dad, if you went to school together, how come he's so much older than you are? Oh, he's not older, Bud. In fact, he's a year younger than your father. Uh, Bud, you must remember I'm not uh, young anymore. Are you kidding? Why, Father, there are boys at college who look older than you do. Betty. Well, isn't it true, Mother? Isn't Father just as young as he's always been? Well, that's what I keep telling him, but he won't believe it. That's what I keep telling him, too. Well, now, kids... Uh... <laughs> the last time Father and I were over at school together, the girls were simply swooning. Wanted to know where I caught that gorgeous man. Oh, Betty, stop it. I mean it, Father. So do I. They thought you were my new boyfriend. That's what they thought. <laughs> what are you talking about, shrimp? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, can we all get back to the table now? Breakfast is on. Yeah, come on, kids. Get it while it's hot. First come, first serve. Let's get with it. Move over, knucklehead. Uh, quit pushing. Well, the wedding was divine last night, Father. Who caught the bride's bouquet? Oh, that Janie Liggett. She jumped right up in front of me. I had it right in my hand. <laughs> you should have seen it. it. It looked like a basketball game. Everybody jumping for the ball. <laughs> the guy could have got killed in there. <laughs> I had it right in my hand. That Janie Liggett. What a sinner she'd make. <laughs> hey, wonderful breakfast, honey. Thank you, dear. I don't know what I put on this darn blue suit for. Oh, if your friend's coming, Father, I've got to get dressed. Let me out. Look out, you're stepping all over me. Well, move your big feet. Where's my yellow blouse, Mother? In your drawer. Oh, I better put another shirt on, huh, Dad? Where's my... In your drawer. <laughs> you better go change your dress, Angel. Okay, I'll put on my blue one. It's in the drawer. <laughs> <laughs> the kids, I tell you, Margaret, they keep a person young. I really feel sorry for old Eddie Gilbert. Why, dear? Well, his children have grown and gone away. He and his wife left alone. That's probably why he's turned into an old man before his time. Nothing left to live for. Well, maybe he's like you, dear. Old one day and young the next. No, when the children are grown, that's the end of the line. I could tell by the tone of Eddie's letter. Rheumatism, you know. Old rocking chair's got him. Oh, there he is, dear. Yeah, well, let me get my coat and vest on. I, uh, kind of dread meeting old Eddie face to face. He was such a youthful, bubbling sort of fellow when he was young. Well, hurry, dear. Let's not keep him waiting. Yeah, come on, honey. And, uh, try not to notice his age, you know. <laughs> no, I'll try, dear. <laughs> well, look through the window. Is that his car out in front? That English sport job? Uh -huh. No, not Eddie. Well, Anderson, I'm Gilbert. Not Eddie Gilbert. Sure. Don't you remember me, Jim? Yes, but where's the... I mean, uh, <laughs> you haven't changed. <laughs> Neither of you. You look just like you did in school. I can't believe it. Excuse Eddie. me, I'm Margaret Anderson, Mr. Gilbert. Oh, how do you do? Delighted to meet you. M Margaret, this is Eddie. Yes, dear, we've met. Well, come on in. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, give me your coat, Eddie. Well, thanks, Jim. Man, you look great. Well, so do you. I thought, I mean, well, it's been so long. Well, I'll go up and help the children. How many do you have now, Jim? Three. They'll be down in a minute. Come on in the living room. Yeah. You know, I just can't get over it. <laughs> can't get over what, Jim? You. From your letter, I uh, expected, well, <laughs> you'd be sort of older. Why, because I'm a grandfather? Well, yes. <laughs> I don't feel like a grandfather. I don't feel any older than I did when we were in school. It's all in your attitude of mind, Jim. A man is just as young as he feels. Well, I've always believed that. Well, I had a touch of rheumatism, but I got that when Gladys and I were out ice skating. Fell through the ice. <laughs> got wet, you know. But it's gone now. Never felt better. But, Eddie, uh, what do you do now that the children have grown up and gone? What do we do? Man, we're living. 
We told the kids, look, we love you both. We'll always be around if you need us, but we're not going to be babysitters for our grandchildren. Gladys and I are doing all the things we couldn't do before. We're free, man. We're having more fun than we ever had in our lives. Well, I guess I never thought of it that way. You know, Jim, I'll confess I hesitated about coming out to see you. It's been a long time, and, well, I was afraid maybe you'd, uh, well, change. <laughs> I never felt younger, Eddie. <laughs> you look great, Jim. Well, like I always say, it's all in your attitude of mind. We never grow old while the heart is young. <laughs> For goodness sake, eat post brand flakes. So good and so good for Ladies, that's a fine little melody to keep in mind every time you go shopping. I say that because new Post 40% Bran Flakes really are good, and so good for you. You see, something wonderful has happened to Bran. Today's Post Bran Flakes have a delicious new magic oven flavor that's fast making it the favorite cereal of more and more people every day. And of course, Post Brand Flakes give you those important keep regular benefits that Bran is famous for. So, next time you go shopping, look for new Post 40% Brand Flakes, America's largest selling Brand Flakes. And remember that friendly melody. Post Brand Flakes are so good and so good for you. <laughs> For a while, it looked as though Father Time had Jim Anderson by the coattails. But the old man with the hourglass apparently just couldn't stand the gaff at the white frame house on Maple Street. Witness the scene taking place in the front hall. Margaret, are you ready? Be down in a minute, dear. Where are you going, Dad? Oh, your mother and I are going over to the Phillips for a while. What's in the suitcase? Oh, just a few things we're taking along. You have a gleam in your eye, Father. What are you up to? Nothing. Your mother and I are simply going out for a little relaxation. No, I'm ready, dear. <laughs> What's in the suitcase? Tell them, dear. That's our equipment. We're going over to the Phillips to play some badminton. After that, we're going bowling. Then we're going horseback riding. After that... Oh, stop. <laughs> Good night, children. Come on, girl. Let's go, boy. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Until then, good night and good luck from the makers of Post 40% Brand Flakes, America's largest selling brand flakes, and Instant Postum, the drink that's entirely caffeine-free. In our cast were Rhoda Williams as Betty, Dorothy Lovett, Ted Donaldson, Helen Strom, and Ben Weldon. It's the best hot cereal you ever ate. Post Wheat Meal, the best hot cereal anybody ever ate. Rich and delicious with a nut-like flavor you'll never want to miss. And hot post-wheat meal is so good for you. Packed full of solid whole wheat nourishment, especially good for children. Post-wheat meal takes just three minutes to cook. Get the big family economy size with a picture of Roy Rogers on the package. Post-wheat meal. The best hot cereal you ever ate. This is Robert Young, ladies and gentlemen. I want to welcome all of you youngsters who have recently joined the Robert Young Good Drivers Club by signing the man-to-man -man or dad-to-daughter pledge for safe driving on our streets and highways. If you are not yet a member, please drop a line to me at this NBC station and your membership card and copy of the agreement pledge will be sent to you. Thank you. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers. This is Bill Foreman speaking. Tonight, play Truth or Consequences on NBC.